So I'd like to thank over 900 of you who have committed to joining us today to make a difference in the lives of women and girls in our community. I think this is pretty picture worthy. So I'm just gonna pause right here. If you have a bite, you know, maybe shut your mouth, okay? Right, chew with your mouth closed, as my mom always said, but I'm gonna take a picture for TV, so that's just a warning. And since it's TV, I'm gonna take a moving picture. So here we go. Yeah, you can get crazy. There we go, there we go. I gotta show all 900 somehow. And then all the way to the end, and then, whoops, I don't think I started at the very beginning. There we go. All right, that will uh, kind of knock your socks off if you see that on Local 5 Live tomorrow. <laughs> There's a reason I'm not a photographer. Now, I know some of you have been spending the Thursday after Labor Day with us for the past 19 years. And some of you are joining us for the first time. Welcome to all of you. If you have any questions about the Women's Fund, please make sure to check out the event program. It's packed with information about all the great work happening here at the Women's Fund that your support makes possible. Speaking of that support, Please, we're still selling the raffle tickets. If you need some raffle tickets, three for 20, your chance to win a designer handbag and other goodies uh, that will value over $1,000. So wave your hand to get a volunteer to come to you. The vision of the Women's Fund is to empower Fox Valley women and girls to flourish personally, economically, and professionally. Each of you are playing a role in making that vision a reality by volunteering time, supporting our local nonprofit community, and advocating for solutions to the many pressing issues that face women and girls locally and regionally. The impact of the Women's Fund has never been greater. As mentioned earlier, this fiscal year, over $160,000 was invested, and it brings the total to 1.6 million. You can't say that enough during this luncheon today. <laughs> Why not? You are funding much needed change. You continue to write the story of hope for women and girls. Your support here today helps a single mom who was making $10 an hour and saw no hope for a different life realize that she could change her story, go back to school, and support her children. Your support here today furthers our backing of education for middle and high school girls and boys, important to note, so that they can learn about healthy relationships and respect. Your support here today means continued advocacy for gender equality. Uh-oh, the tears are going to come. <laughs> Every year, there's something that just brings me to tears. And when I think about my daughter, Gabby, who's going to be 12 in a month, I think about all the people here, and that makes me so hopeful. But for our daughters and granddaughters, that they will have a different path than the one that the mothers have had before us. Your support here today means hope, Opportunity, equality. Your support here today has a ripple effect. Think about this. Changing the life of one woman, which changes the life of one family, which then changes the life of our community. Today you will learn the difference that you are making in the lives of these women and girls who are our neighbors, they're our coworkers, they're family members and friends. And we are so glad that you're here today and hope you will continue to join us as we work together to invest in her. Today's presenting sponsor, Community First Credit Union, is a valued partner in the work of the Women's Fund. Community First has sponsored all 19 Women's Fund luncheons, and they have a permit, yes. <laughs> also good for clapping, they have a permanent endowment fund with the Women's Fund to support annual grant making. We can applause that too. So right now, I'm delighted to introduce our presenting sponsor, Sarah Micheletti, Community First Credit Union board member and attorney and shareholder at Sitzman Law Firm. Let's welcome her to the stage. I am happy, I am happy to be here today representing Community First, more than 137,000 member owners is a volunteer member of the Board of Directors. Much like the efforts of the Women's Fund, Community First has built on the philosophy of people helping people, an ideal that believes deeply in the power that comes from working together. 
For our members, that cooperation looks like homes for their families, educations for their children, savings for just about anything, <clears throat> including the unexpected, well-deserved retirements and communities that are stronger. Community First long-standing support of the Women's Fund is an extension of our spirit of cooperation, and we are proud to be in your company as supporters of change, enlightenment, inspiration, and resources made possible by the Women's Fund. One amazing example of this is the girls' grant-making program. For nine years, the Women's Fund has been inspiring leadership in young women throughout the Fox Valley through the annual, gra annual Girls' Grant-Making Project. The Girls' Grant-Making Project is a program which brings together a diverse group of high school students, or high school girls, for a two-day leadership and community education program. More than 100 high school girls have participated in the program. The project includes identifying the needs of local girls and awarding $10,000 in grant funding to programs addressing those needs. This year was one of the largest groups with 17 participants from Menasha, Nina, and St. Mary's High Schools. The girls experience a deeper understanding of the complexities to the many issues facing their female classmates and peers in our community, and a passion to spark her opinions within the group, to spark positive change for girls, excuse me. They, are all, they were all very eager to share her opinions with the group and also respectful of the other participants and their viewpoints. They were, ar they articulated, excuse me, they were articulate advocates for the projects that they felt should be supported, but worked successfully in an environment that required compromise and consensus. I think we could learn a lot from them. We learned firsthand the art of grant making and a positive impact throughout, through philanthropy. I would like, now like to introduce Shayla Reyes, a student at Nina High School and a participant in the 2019 Girls Grant Making Project to share her experience with us. Hello and good afternoon. I was not aware that there'd be a huge camera in my face, so <laughs> hopefully I don't have food stuck in my teeth, but. <laughs> Um, good afternoon, my name is Shayla, and I once heard the words, be the change that you wish to see in the world, but I never really understood what those words actually meant. A few months ago, when I was given the opportunity to be a part of the Women's Fund Girls, Make, Girls Grant Making pro Program, I was more than delighted, but I never knew it would enlighten me with the explanations to those words. In March and April, 16 girls and I from Nina, Menasha, and St. Mary High School met for a two-day leadership training, community education, and grant-making program. Through facilitated discussion, we identified issues important to us and our peers, and ultimately agreed that access and opportunities for post-secondary education was a priority issue we wished to address. At the end of the program, we awarded $10,000 in grants to the following programs. $5,000 to the Boys and Girls Club STAR program, Scholars on Target to Achieve Results, the program is an academic engagement intervention program for middle and high school black and African American students in the Appleton and Menasha School District. Full-time opportunity coordinators serve as advocates, mentors, connectors, and guides with the goal of closing the gap in high school graduation rates. 2,500 to the Life Tools Foundation, Shoulders to Stand On, this program provides exceptional one-on-one -on -one tutoring for students from economically disadvantaged families to maximize their learning potential and confidently pursue their educational and personal goals. And lastly, but certainly not least, through 2,500 to Fox Valley's Technical College Foundation. You mean I can go to college, and with this program you can. So this program helps female students at risk of not graduating from high school change their mindset about education complete their high school diploma, remove barriers to enrollment in higher education coursework. After recognizing these life-changing and honorable organizations, I'd like to say a few words on my experience as an active member of the Girls' Grant Making. The Girls' Grant Making has been an honorable and memorable moment in my life. 
It allowed me to expand my passions, put them forward, and enforce them with a team of creative, ambitious women and girls. It has unraveled be the change that you wish to see in the world. Because in my personal opinion, the Women's Fund is the complete summary of those inspiring words. Unfortunately, women struggle every day, but the Women's Fund staff, stri the Women's Fund staff strives to seize the problem and became the change they want to see by initiating and creating this wonderful organization. That is the Women's Fund that helps females time after time. They have reflected, they have, sorry, <laughs> they have reflected upon me such fundamental values that within me there was a change to help women. In my 16 years of reading uh, school textbooks, I know that I cannot reflect what history, what historic women advocates have done for the female community, but I can solely follow the path of ambition for women's rights that they took. I hold gratitude for the Women's Fund for guiding me through the first steps of the path. Thank you for investing in her. I just said to her, you weren't nervous? She was sitting at the table saying, I'm a little worried about all these faces, but great job, Shayla. That's our future. Isn't that amazing? Good job. All right, I am now pleased to introduce representatives of this year's speaker sponsors, Sarah Paulson of Associated Bank and Mary McNevin of US Venture, and they will introduce our speaker. So let's give them a round of applause. She wouldn't be here without them. Thank you for the introduction, Lisa. And hello, everybody. Associated Bank is once again pleased to be the speaker sponsor today and again share the stage with our friends and longtime partner, U.S. Venture. As Lisa mentioned, my name is Sarah Paulson. I'm a certified financial planner and vice president of personal trust with Associated Bank out of our Nina branch. I also have the honor and privilege of sitting on the board of directors for the Women's Fund, the Young Women's Initiative Task Force, and the Development Committee for the Women's Fund. Personally and professionally, I am all in when it comes to empowering women and girls. Associate appreciates and understands the value of investing in women and investing in the communities where our customers live. Since 2011, we've increased women in senior level positions from 17% to 31%. And our company was recently recognized by 2020 Women on Boards for having more than 20% of women in our board seats. But it's not just about achieving a number. It's about recognizing the unique talents a diverse and inclusive workforce brings to our clients and recognizing how we all benefit from a culture that truly believes we are better because of it. Equally as important is the work we do as an organization to invest in the communities in which we serve. Last year, more than half of our colleagues logged volunteer hours for a total of more than 74,000 hours, supporting over 3,000 nonprofits in our communities. In the Fox Cities, Associate provided separate corporate grants to 28 local nonprofits, including the generous support to be the speaker sponsor here last year. Like our speaker and like our partner, U.S. Venture, Associate recognizes the incredible culture we have here locally. Your money works here, and we are thrilled to be a part of it. Thank you, Sarah. U.S. Venture is also proud to be a speaker sponsor again this year. I'm Mary McNevin. I'm the Director of Talent Management, and I'm happy to be here today as a company representative. Founded 68 years ago in a house in Kimberly, Wisconsin, U.S. Venture has now grown to become one of the largest privately held businesses in the state and is a leading distributor of products vehicles consume across the nation. But here in our community, we are equally well known for our giving culture. We are so excited that this year's guest speaker is here to shine a light on social entrepreneurism, a value which we live by at U.S. Venture. Last month, our annual U.S. Venture Open raised a record-breaking $5.2 million for the U.S. Venture Fund for basic needs within the Community Foundation for the Fox River Region the Greater Green Bay Community Foundation, and the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation. And more than 40... <laughs> more, than 40 
More than $46 million has been raised in the 34-year history of this event, and more than $26 million has been granted to nonprofits in Northeast Wisconsin to date. We embrace social innovation and our philanthropic efforts and rely on the expertise and the knowledge of our area community foundations to oversee and implement the granting process. We're committed to supporting long, local nonprofits that work tirelessly on new ideas to eliminate barriers for those in poverty. That's why we're all here today, to support the Women's Fund and its mission to invest in the unique needs of women and girls in our community and inspire females to thrive personally, economically, and professionally. Today, we're gonna to hear from Hannah Davis, a social entrepreneur who has made it her mission to help people thrive around the globe. What I love about Hannah's journey is that it started out as many journeys do for young girls. She goes to school, steps out of her comfort zones, and considers the way that she can make her mark in the world. Hannah founded Bangs at 24 years old to try to make the world a better place. She launched her, launched her website in 2012 with four styles of shoes, and over the past seven years, with zero capital venture funding, she's built her company's 100% online operations and sales to offer 32 pairs on the website today. Bang's shoes marketing is driven solely by social media, fueled by a network of highly passionate ambassadors. Their growth has enabled Bangs to invest in a diverse group of entrepreneurs around the world. Davis herself was born and raised in South Carolina, and in March of 2017, Hannah moved herself and her virtual operations to Austin, Texas, where she still currently lives with her long friend, longtime boyfriend, Victor, sister Molly, and Benny the cat. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Hannah Davis to the Fox Cities and the Women's Fund Luncheon. Testing, is this thing on? Does this work? Can you guys hear me? Okay, I feel like Britney Spears with this thing. Um, so, uh, my name's Hannah Davis, and I'm the founder of an online footwear brand called Bang Shoes, and I am so excited to be here today. This is officially the biggest group I've ever spoken to, and the bar was set so high from our, our speakers already on the stage today, so I hope I can keep you guys as enthralled. Um, this is such a special presentation for me. Um, I founded my company. It is a, a let's see where this is our little, this thing. All right. Oh, too far. Okay. So Bang Shoes is an everyday adventure footwear brand. They're canvas shoes. And I founded it when I was 22 years old to try to make the world a better place. Like I said, this presentation very specifically is highly significant for two reasons. The first one is quite selfish. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, Bang Shoes released a shoe called the National Nomad High Tops. It's an all white shoe with the outside of the United States uh, printed on the outside of just the right shoe. It has all 50 states, Alaska, Hawaii, and they're not available on the website right now, so if you go try to try to find them, <laughs> you, won't be, you'll, you won't be able to find them. But I have a pair, um, and it, when the shoes are delivered, they were given to our customers with two markers, and the concept is that as you visit the states, you color them in. So a couple of years ago, uh, a group of ambassadors gifted me a pair of National Nomad High Tops, which I thought was so special. Like they saved and everybody pitched it and they actually purchased a pair online to give to me at um, a meetup that we had. And now whenever I go to meetups, I have brand ambassadors sign them. But you will note Wisconsin is not colored in yet. <laughs> So this, this, this trip is my very first time to Wisconsin, and I am just so thrilled that I get to color in my state. Yes. <laughs> so the other, the other very uh, special piece about this presentation is that I got to, yesterday, I got to meet Stacy Hazlitt Rothy. So Stacy is a volunteer on your events committee, and she's the reason that my name was thrown into the ring to be up on this stage today. I first came into contact with Stacy almost four years ago, and yesterday was the first time that we got 
face to face. So before I go into the significance of meeting, meeting Stacy, you do need some background. So let's go back, back, back. I was born and raised in South Carolina, and I attended Clemson University. Has anybody heard of the, the <laughs> Clemson Tigers? Number one in the ACC, yes. We need more claps. I guess this is <laughs> different zone. Um, but I, was, I attended Clemson University, and I think I know that this audience, it's everybody in this audience, and I truly believe that most humans want to make the world a better place, and I was no different. And you do see a lot of this on college campuses, people trying to figure out how can I take my limited time on the planet to try to make the w a small impact or as big of an in impact as I'm able to make. So I come from a family of doctors. My great or my grandfather father is the OG entrepreneur in my family. He started his eye care practice when he was 20, and he is turning 96 next month, and he still goes into his office three days a week. So let's give Papa a round of applause. <laughs> um, he, he is he's incredible. He set the bar so high for work ethic, what is possible with a human life. Um, my dad followed in his footsteps and is an eye doctor. My uncle's an eye doctor. My sister's an eye doctor. You get the point. So in my family, you know, I think um, you, know, you absorb the stories around you. And when I was younger, I had all of these doctors. So I thought you know, in elementary school, middle school, high school, that's how you find success and happiness is you become a doctor. So I decided that I was going to you know, start off Clemson. And I signed up for Bio 110 and all these chemistry classes. I made it through exactly one semester as a biology major at Clemson University. So I have a newfound level of respect for doctors just because you guys made it through four years of bi biology. It's just, it's crazy to me. So that sort of, you know, I had this, I had this thing this, that I carried with me that all of you have that how do you make the world a better place? There's so many options. How do you narrow it down? There's so many needs in the world. So I was like, well, if I, you know, the, being a doctor very clearly, um, satisfied that desire, but I, I wasn't up to the test, I wasn't up to the standards, so then what do you do? So I started looking into my other options, and I decided I was going to um, try to potentially go to law school, so I signed up for poli-sci classes, and I thought, okay, maybe I'm going to use my law degree to try to make the world a better place. You know, there's, maybe you could lobby for a different cause, um, or you know, there's many different things you could apply your law degree to try to change the world. So I complete my, my degree. I graduate in 2009 with a political science degree and a minor in Mandarin. And I had, <laughs> you know, I, um, I, was, I, was one of, I was one of three people in a grad, the very first graduating class that ever graduated from Clemson with a minor in Mandarin. There were three of us out of 19,000 people. <laughs> um, so I am, I am so grateful for that experience. And I, I have to say, I was, I was enthralled with the Chinese culture, with the Chinese language. Um, I took every, I, I met a highly, highly influential professor, um, and she completely changed the trajectory, really, of my life. Um, she just, this China was so interesting to me. How did it exist on the same planet? A complete different set of philosophers built up the culture, a language I was like, what, how, like, when she came in and first, she, like, no funny business, just came in and started speaking in Mandarin, and it, like, blew my mind, and I just had to absorb, absorb absorb, absorb. So I, t I, like, I took the professor, I don't know you guys, the, the best advice I could give to college students now is don't take classes, take professors. And so I, t I, like, fo I was like borderline like professionally stalking this woman. I'm like, <laughs> what are you teaching next? You know, like, what I need more. So I study abroad with her in China. And I, um, so my, my, uh, my graduation, I, you know, I, I graduate, I walk the stage, and does everybody remember what happened in 2008, right? That changed the, literally the world. The housing market crashed. So when, when I was in elementary school and middle school and even high school in the first couple of years of college, I was always told all you need for success and happiness is a degree, and then the world is at your fingertips. So when I graduated, everyone was like, just kidding. <laughs> it's all different. <laughs> You're on your own. Um, and just a little, a little, uh, this, is, this is a true story. So uh, in 2011, I was working as a, at a restaurant, and there was not one, there was not two, there were three JDs, so people who had 
gone to, gotten a, a bachelor's degree, gone to law school, taken the bar, passed the bar, and could not find work. So this was, this was the world everyone was like, make your dreams come true. You know, so it was a very scary time to be entering the, the job, the, the workforce. It, if you looked at it correctly, though, as soon as you got over the fear, it was also incredibly thrilling because the bar was so low, you couldn't mess it up. So that is the, I eventually found that perspective. I was like, this is a grand opportunity. So I was a broke college student, and I think like pretty much everyone, you know, you want to see the world, you want to travel, but I had no money, and so I needed to find a way to get paid to travel. And this is, this is how scrappy I am. I did it. So I signed a contract teaching English in China for a year. I was able to get myself to China. Um, and then I also, you know, I come from a family of planners, and so I have this this like deep rooted need to plan out every 15 minutes of the day and I, I haven't been able to get over it yet. So, and I comes from my parents, so I get it honestly. But the plan was to go to China, well to take the LSAT, which I did, I uh, studied and took the LSAT, go to China, teach for a year while I'm in China, apply to law school, and then how, you know, once my teaching contract ends, attend law school, try to make the world a better place with my law degree. Um, and this is 19, 20-year-old Hannah was so sure that this was the plan, that this is how it was going to be. So I get over to China, and I'm starting to, you know, apply to internships. I'm, you know, talking to family members who are lawyers. And I have one of my cousins who says to me, she says, you know, Hannah, I think that your understanding of what a lawyer does doesn't actually reflect what lawyers do day to day. And I was like... <laughs> Listen, Amy, I've seen Legally Blonde. Like, I get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm good to go here. Like, you need to <laughs> reassess yourself. So a couple, of <laughs> a, couple of, a couple of days later, you know, I'm like, all right, I think maybe you don't know what you're talking about. After some internal reflection and deep digging, um, I realized she might have a point. She does have my best interest, but that put me back at square one. So if you want to help people, you want to make the world a better place, you're not up to four years of biology, being a lawyer might not be what you think it is, what do you do? And so I started looking into the nonprofit sector. And has, does anybody in here know who Dan Pelota is or Pilata? I might be saying his name wrong. So uh, but yes, I assume there would be some people in this audience that does. So I watched one of his TED Talks called The Way We Think About Charity is Dead Wrong, and it completely revolutionized how I look at impact. And the message of his TED Talk was that the world needs linking organizations. So there's so many amazing organizations out there in the world, but we also need not we don't need fully new missioned organizations all the time. We also need a group of people that focus on connecting exi existing organizations. And that stuck with me, you know, so, so much. Um, so while I'm doing all of this research, I'm also... 21 years old and I'm living in a foreign country so I'm enjoying the culture I'm going shopping and I stumble upon a market where there was a pair of shoes that was um, you know kind of seated, seated out and I bought a pair so um, this this shoe on the left hand side is the shoe that I bought off the streets I actually still have the original shoe I work with it next to my computer every day um, and that little logo in the upper hand corner, I actually had somebody sew on. So these were shoes that they were like a dollar, something that you could buy off the street. And then on the photo on the right hand side, the shoe on the left of that photo is the original next to a pair that you can buy on the website today. So I bought this shoe and there was no intention behind it. It was more of like a souvenir. And what was really unique about this shoe, so does anybody in here own Converse or Vans? How could you? Just kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> I set you up. <laughs> um, the point I was trying to make is that there are, um, there's a style. So this category of shoe is called canvas vulcanized rubber. And most canvas vulcanized rubber shoes have a white rubber sole. And then they have a different color canvas. So picture your, your very classic like black Chuck All Stars with the white rubber sole. Also Vans has the checkered shoe, white rubber sole. Keds, white rubber sole. Superga, white rubber sole. What was really unique about these is that the rubber was this olive green color and the canvas matched so that it looked like a boot but it's a canvas shoe. So I was like, oh, these are so cool. I bought a pair. My guy friends bought pairs. There's like a group of American teachers like, like running around China in these. My students were 
horrified. They were like, that is so embarrassing. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, come on, guys. You know, they're like, you no. They were not having it. So I was like, you know what? There's, I, I like these. It doesn't matter what you guys think. So that's all kind of happening in the background while I'm teaching English. And I end up, um, the plan is still, remember, to go to law school and or to p potentially go to law school, start looking into the nonprofit space. And then I, I realized that my contract is about to end. And so I'm like, all right, I'm about to enter the real world. I've got to make some moves. Like, how, how, what am I going to do from here? So I, um, during all of this research in the nonprofit space, I also discovered um, this term called social business. So I had never heard of it before. And for whatever reason, I, I actually don't know why or where it came from, but I always thought, in middle school and high school and even in college and at, through college that business was a negative thing and that money was evil and it was greedy and there was no way to be both a, a business person and a philanthropist. I thought you had to choose. And so this discovery of social business and truly interactions with companies like U.S. Venture that are so passion based and you know giving based that also have you know these this um, these amazing missions um you know it showed me that you can be both you can have both so i love that idea of social business so i end up um my teaching contract ends i have of course my list i've got a deadline like you have to figure out how to adult by this day or you're it's over for you so i actually had this very like stereotypical aha entrepreneurial moment where I, and I, I'm, I'm not making this up, There's, this is not, I am a storyteller, but this is not exaggerated. I literally threw my hands down and I sat up in bed and I said out loud, like I gasped and I was like, oh my gosh, it's the shoes. And so I decided I was going to take this shoe and create a shoe that would be a little bit more durable and sustainable for a Western audience. And I was going to try to use it to make an impact. So there was clear inspiration pulled from companies like Tom's, Patagonia. Do you guys remember those Live Strong bracelets, those, those yellow ones? So I, right then and there, I was like, all right, I'm, I got to come up with a name. So I, the, the brand name Bangs comes from the Chinese character for the word help. So this is um, the, the character. And um, I decided I was going to link our giving to a percentage. So our model takes 20% of our net profits and invests in a cause. But how do you choose the cause? If you want to try to make an impact, where do you, where do you go? So during all of, um, you know, while I'm trying to sort through all of this, I was doing research in the, into the nonprofit space, and I realized that there, were, there was conversation around different types of nonprofits. And there is a group of people that are so solely focused on giving people things, um, areas of natural disaster, areas that have been affected by drought and famine that need food, water, clothing, like that is a, a high need. Then there is another group of, of nonprofits um, very similar to uh, the Women's Fund and Invest in Her, where people are focusing on investing in humans and providing opportunities, acknowledging that things like pride, ambition, hope, it doesn't matter what you look like or where you come from, people have the desire to provide for themselves, lift themselves out of poverty, and that was like, that is, those are my people. So I said, from there, I'm going to sell this shoe. I'm going to give 20% of the net profits to um, try to invest in humans. And we partnered with an organization called Kiva. So Kiva, has anybody here heard of Kiva? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so Kiva is a microfinance organization. And they are the reason why our vision is able to come to life. And the thing I love the most about Kiva is that their model, it's a microloan. So the implication is that the entrepreneur builds their business, they pay us back. But we don't take, Bangs doesn't take that money out and put it back in our pox pockets. We reinvest the loan. So these loans become recycled. So the impact, because it's tied to a percentage, if the company grows, that number scales and the, the loans are recycled. So this pot of investment has the ability to just grow and grow and grow. So that's, that's a great idea on paper, right? I'm 22 years old. I have a political science degree. I have a minor in Mandarin, and I am ready to take on the world. So I was a bartender. So <laughs> I, um, I decided I was going to launch this shoe company, came back to, to South Carolina, and I was, in fact, working at a bar. So I'm telling everybody I know, you know, I'm, I'm the founder of this shoe company. They're like, do you have any shoes? I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> What, what do you mean? 
So I, um, I went through what I call um, my development period. So my development period was the two-year period from when I signed the LLC, which was very ceremonial, by the way. I, I like went into the state house in South Carolina and like slid my, you could have done it online, but I was like, I'm here to start a business, you know? And then two years later, <laughs> something happened. But so I, I signed my LLC um, and then, you know, moved back to uh, moved to, to Charleston where I was bartending. And that development period um, was the two year period where I hung out on the beach and just talked about doing bangs. Um, <laughs> so everything changed when I met my business partner in Charleston. So I was I'll never forget it was Valentine's Day um, but because I had a coworker say, hey, Hannah, can you pick I wasn't on the schedule and she said, can you pick up my shift? My husband wants to take me and my daughter um, out to Valentine's Day dinner and I know you're not doing anything. So can you have <laughs> so I was like, OK, <laughs> fine, great. I'm there. Um, so I picked up the shift and then has anybody here ever worked at restaurants? Yeah, okay, yes. Um, and so there were sections, and I was behind the bar, and there was a group of high top tables right in front of the bar. Um, and typically, on a slow night, the, bar, the bartender would have both the bar and the high top tables. But on a busy night, like Valentine's Day, they split up the sections. And so um, there, I was behind the bar, and there was a server that was um, assigned to the high top tables. And it was like maybe 4.57 and the bar opened at 5 and we were like back in the server section. There was this girl who was, the girl who was assigned to the high tops um, saw a couple come in and, and she, she was like, oh yeah, I don't want to take the table. So I was like, we're at work, I guess I'll work, so I'll take it. <laughs> um, so I walked out and I'm like, hey, you know, here you have served him some beer and some nachos. And the guy ends up saying, you know, hey, Hannah, tell me something interesting about yourself. I'm like, okay, I'm, I have a shoe company. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, you must be doing quite well. Can I have another beer? <laughs> um, but uh, so I told him all about bangs and, and the mission behind it and why I believed in it and how I believed that people want to do good. They just need opportunities and about this organization and these shoes that I discovered. And he's asking me all these questions and he's eventually like, do you have a business plan? Can I see it? And I was like, no, but I, <laughs> I didn't have a business plan. I was like, this guy coming in here asking for business plans. Um, <laughs> And then, but his wife was with him, who is l just a lovely human, and she set her fork and knife down and looked me in the eye, and she said, Hannah, you need to listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. So I was like, all right, I'm vibing with this lady. I don't, I'm not sure about this guy yet, so maybe leave your, your name and your email address, and I'll send you updates on how the company's doing, because we've got a newsletter. But no, <laughs> no, no, no shoes, but a newsletter. I had my priorities. I had my priorities in line. So I end up, they settle their bill, um, left a great tip, they leave, and I Google this guy. And up pops all these articles about a retired executive from VF. Anybody heard of VF? Yes. So for those of you who haven't, VF um, is a parent apparel company that owns and manages brands. So VF owns and manages Van Shoes, North Face, Jansport, Seven Jeans. <laughs> so, right. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I... I like, I like, I blew it. Like you, like, it's over for you. So I leave the bar. I call my childhood best friend, and I'm like, we've got a situation. So like, you need to help me get through this. So we end up. Um, I, oh, so I'm a pol I have a political science degree. So all I did was write papers, but it was agonizing, right? Like it would take me weeks to write a two-page paper, and it was like, ugh, like the worst thing ever. So when I tell you I've never written a paper this fast, I put together a 32-page business plan in like a week and a half, two weeks, and I email this guy out of the blue. I hadn't talked to him since I like threw him out of the bar, <laughs> and and I was like, hey, it's Hannah. I don't know if you remember me. Uh, <laughs> like, you remember that business plan you were curious about? Well, here it is, and I would be honored to have you look at it. Um, so fast forward two months and George and his wife Gail are investors and partners in Bank Shoes. And since then we have had s as many successes as we've had, we've had more failures. And we've experienced issues in product development, um, manufacturing, any kind of manufacturing, all sorts of logistics. The one biggest problem that we have had is getting people to know about bangs. So there's no amount of money, no amount of experience that can get that can solve that problem quickly. So we were had that problem in 2012 and we still have that problem today. 
So one of the things that we did to try to get the word out about the company was create an ambassador program. So we targeted universities and we were looking for people who cared about using their purchases to make an impact and who liked the shoes. So in 2012, I started the Bang Shoes Ambassador Program, and it was just me and George still, so we're just, you know, trucking along. And I recruited 10 ambassadors, and I was overwhelmed. It was, it was so much, but so much fun to try to recruit these people. We also were going through the universities at this time, so I don't know if anybody works at or with at a university. And before I say what I'm about to say, I understand that the university's first priority is to protect their students, and so I get why they are the way they are but from a business owner's perspective trying to get organizations started on campus it was a nightmare right um so in two th we we had our ambassador program through universities from 2012 while we were selling wholesale so we had shoes i would i put 12 pairs of shoes in the trunk of my car and drove up the east coast out the west coast i still drive my 2005 honda but i'm not get, i'm never getting rid of that car um but and i would sell shoes in stores so in 2005 we were primarily um, selling wholesale and we were focusing our brand ambassador program on going through universities as our main form of marketing in 2015 we discovered instagram so I, I am 30, I'm almost 32, so Facebook came out when I was in high school. Uh, yeah, I remember my senior year of high school, Facebook came out, and it was like a time suck, right? Like, everybody's like, get off Facebook. My mom's like, only one hour a day, you know? So, and, and so when, I, when Instagram came out, it, it was interesting because in, for people my, around my age, social media was never a tool. It was always something that you did to waste time or stalk your ex or whatever you want to do. <laughs> but in 2015, we started realizing that Instagram is a connection tool and it can be used to build community and it can be used to build a business. So in 2015, we shifted 100% all, all of our sales to online and all of our ambassador program to an Instagram effort, which meant you didn't have to go through the university, you had to like the shoes, you had to care about our mission, and you had to have a smartphone. So the pool of people opened up. So we have, um, in 2012, we had 10 ambassadors. We went from 10 to 50 to 100, to 80, and then to 150 when we started um, growing on Instagram. So in 2015, when we hit 150 ambassadors, I was still doing it by myself, and I realized I am not able to build a community alone. I need help. So I created a layer of, of people in the brand ambassador program that I called mentors. So in 2015, I recruited 13 people to help me build community within the brand ambassador program. So we offer real uh, opportunities, things that start online but flow into the real world for people to connect. We do things like meetups um, where people really just like get together. It's on a much smaller scale than this. There's my, maybe like five to ten people at each um, but we are co we connect people um, we also focus on cleanups where we urge people to clean up their communities we host things like um, mindless like fun things that we call the coffee shop challenge where we encourage people to get out and discover new businesses in their community get outside of your normal comfort zone and we realize that there is a need for this and that people want this and people engage with this so this group of mentors this layer I created in 2015 I had 13 people that I recruited and then in January of 2016, Miss Stacy Hazlett applied. And Stacy, I did go through and find your application. So I am looking for it here. Okay, so January, tw January 12th, 2016, at 2.35 p.m., your application came in. I'm going to read the final sentence verbatim from Stacy's application. <laughs> I want to travel the world one day and see all the beauty that's on the planet. As a bonus, I make the best homemade mac and cheese you'll ever have. <laughs> and, and let me, now that I've been to Wisconsin, like, she's probably not joking. Cheese is a way of life here. So, like, I am, I, so with the help of people like Stacy and the rest of our mentors and the rest of our community, we have truly created a space for our, the people that buy our shoes, that love our shoes, that believe in our mission to connect. 
So this month, we start our brand ambassador program with 6,500 ambassadors across all 50 states and multiple countries. We, we've been able to provide real community through virtual and real world activities. And the most amazing thing that I'm the most proud of that my company and my community and that people like Stacy and all of our brand ambassadors have been able to do is we have been able to invest in over 2,300 entrepreneurs across 70 countries. Thank you. So we have invested in every kind of person that you can imagine with every type of business from farm animals to food trucks to solar panels to hammock making. And when I look back at my success, any, any success that we may have had, it can be pulled from our decision to invest in humans, in our ambassador program, our social mission, and our company culture. And that's really the point of this entire gathering, isn't it? To highlight the butterfly effect of choosing to invest in people and applaud you today for your investments in the women of this community. Thank you. And I do, <laughs> I do want to say one more thing. I, do, I just, I want to say one more thing. So I, I had the opportunity to speak to Jen and Julie and Cheryl and Stacy a couple of weeks ago to prepare for this presentation. And something that they asked me really stuck with me. They said, Hannah, um, in your presentation, can you talk about any um, troubles or tribulations that you've had as a female entrepreneur? And I was like, you got it. So I went and I thought, and I could tell you a story about someone who was condescending or perhaps a story about somebody who made maybe an inappropriate comment, but then I realized that that's not that I'm a female entrepreneur, that's just that I'm a woman in the world. And, and that really struck me because what that means, I, you know, I'm aware of history. What that means is that my journey is possible because of the women in this room and because of organizations like the Women's Fund. So I wanted to just say to the women who came before me, to all of the women that have been paving this path, like I see the work, I am so grateful. I am only able to have this story because of the work that you have done to the young women in the room, to the women who are just getting started, please keep working. There are so many women still in the world who don't have opportunities like I have and like you have. There's still so much work to be done. Thank you to the Women's Fund. Thank you so much. Please consider a generous donation. This is important work and I'm so grateful that I got to be here, so thank you. Wow, I, that is, it's truly moving. And uh, I can't wait to go home and tell my husband that I am the newest Bangs ambassador. So, <laughs> but he'll understand it's for a good cause. Shoe shopping for a good cause. That's the best thing ever. All right, I would now like to invite Julie Keller, Executive Director of the Women's Fund, and Amy Van Stratton, Board President of the Women's Fund, to the stage. Let's give them a warm welcome. Anna, that was inspiring. It was fun. Congratulations. It was really inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us here today. Um, again, I am Julie Keller. Next year will mark the 25th anniversary of the founding of the Women's Fund. 25 years since 106 women recognized that a fund for women was necessary to meet the goals of all women. Because of their foresight in your support, 1.6 million has been invested in 83 organizations, 217 programs, serving thousands of women, impacting hundreds of families, and benefiting our entire community. Hi, I'm Amy Van Stratton, Vice President of Finance and Facilities at Fox Valley Technical College and the President of the Women's Fund Board. I donate my time and my money because I know the Women's Fund is fostering and supporting innovative and collaborative projects and programs to address the many issues facing women and girls in our community. I hope you will join me with your support because none of us can get through life without the help of a friend or even sometimes the help of a stranger. One of the areas where we can collectively have great impact is economic security for women. When women are financially secure, they have more options. That could be leaving an abusive relationship, going back to school to put them on a career path to get a self-sustaining job, starting a business they have dreamed about for years, or running for political office to change policies. 
For these reasons, economic security has been a key focus area for the Women's Fund. So one of the key findings from our 2017 Status of Women in Northeast Wisconsin report has provided the basis for this work. Female head of households with children are the most likely type to be in poverty at 38%, more than twice the rate of any other household. That means 7,000 single moms are living in poverty in Northeast Wisconsin. And the poverty rate is highest for females between the ages of 18 and 24 at 26%. And for context, the poverty rate is for a family of three is $20,780. This data compelled us to embark on our Starting Point 2.0 collaboration with Fox Valley Technical College and Babes Child Abuse Prevention Program two years ago. This initiative uses a two-generational approach to address the long-term economic security of single mothers and their children. By meeting the needs of the family as a unit, we are building the financial, emotional, and social capital they need to create a stable and successful future. We believe the very best thing we can do for children in poverty is to help their entire family. From that initiative grew Empower, a program for young women without children. Our goal is to help young women who don't have a clear direction for the future and educate them on how to make a successful transition to independence. Out of that effort comes financial security, giving them the solid foundation they need as they embark on their educational and career paths. The goal of both of these programs is for women to enter secondary education with the resources, direction, and confidence that they can succeed and have a future that is greater than they can see today. Today, 39 women have completed these programs, and almost half of them have enrolled or are enrolling in degree and certificate programs with the goal of building skills leading to family-supporting employment. These women are going into career fields such as medical, welding, human resources, business, natural resources, criminal justice, and yes, entrepreneurship. At the end of the programs, we have a graduation ceremony complete with caps and gowns. As the president of the Women's Fund Board, it has been a privilege to hand out the diplomas at graduation. One of the young women I had the pleasure to meet was Dia Tao, who shared her story with the class and guests at graduation. It was inspiring, and we thought you would enjoy hearing it as well. Please give a warm welcome to May 2019 Starting Point 2.0 graduate, Dia Tao. too tall for me, but we'll adjust this. <laughs> all right, thank you, Amy. Um, all right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first off, I would like to thank Kara Nowak from Fox Valley Technical College and the Women's Fund for giving me the opportunity to be here with all of you. I'm excited to share my story and how my journey started. Growing up as a first-generation Hmong daughter and being the oldest, there was significant struggles and barriers throughout my life that have kept me from pursuing my dreams. Coming from a strict family with traditions and values, the path I took for many years was not my own. During the beginning of my senior year in high school, I got married to who I thought was the right person because I was tired of all the stress at home. Obviously, I learned everything the hard way. I realized being a traditional Hmong daughter-in-law was not an easy task. My life was put into a template that had to be followed. Not too long after marriage, I had my first child at age 19. And my second child at age 21, my husband had no future goals, and I was not happy with my life. In the Hmong culture, divorce is not an option. It is a topic no one wants to hear coming from a woman. My culture has very strict values, and I did not know what to expect. So I broke the rules and I wanted a divorce. Then became a divorcee, I wanted to do something for myself. I paid for cosmetology school and I knew I needed a good income so I can support my children. After I became a licensed cosmetologist, I was able to land a great job with a decent income. However, that was not the end of the game for me. I wanted to have my own studio to provide services at my own schedule. The problem was I did not know how I was going to achieve it. Not too long after that, when dropping off my son at school, I saw the Fox Valley Technical College Starting Point 
2.0 flyer. It was then I knew this would be my ticket to open the door to the next chapter in my life. When I entered the workshop, I did not realize how impactful it would be for me, for myself, and my family. I was given the tools and resources to help me grow as an individual, a mother, and it brought positive growth for my children. In the Starting Point 2.0 workshop, we were given the opportunity to invest in ourselves with a strong support system. Each of us has been empowered and our individual needs were met. I was inspired by the other women in their workshop because I knew I wasn't alone. Starting Point 2.0 helped me realize that no matter where you are in life, you can still create a new story. As women of ethnicity in today's society, my dream is to have my own business and start a nonprofit to help families in need. Because of Starting Point 2.0, this dream will be my reality. My hope for today is that each of you would reach out to women you know that could benefit from Starting Point 2.0. The Starting Point 2.0 graduates and I would like to thank you, the donors, and the Women's Fund for making this workshop possible. We would also like to thank the Fox Valley Technical College for the knowledge we have gained and for helping us make our goals a reality. A special thank you to Babes to pr for providing our children a safe and loving educational environment. What I will leave with you all is the reassurance that Starting Point 2.0 is effective and has become more than a workshop. It has become a social movement to strengthen our community. Thank you. Thank you, Dia, for sharing your story with us today and know that um, you now have 900 people here cheering you on. So thank you very much. And thank you to all the graduates. I know we have a few over here. Thank you to all the graduates. Um, if you want to stand up or not. <laughs> <laughs> and you also have over 900 people cheering all of you on, so all the best. And thank you to Karen Nowak, Jen Hauser, Kelly Cole from Fox Valley Technical College, um, Pastor Monty, or Pastor Monty from Babes, for all you do. Thank you so much for, for being here today. <laughs> And now it's, now it's your turn to be part of the Women's Fund story. We can continue to make a difference today when we invest in her. Today I'm going to ask you to continue that investment so we can change the path of women and girls. So we can live in a community and society where women and girls have their basic needs met, live in safety, have opportunities to be economically secure, can pursue their dreams, and achieve their highest potential. Our goal to, today is to raise $40,000 to support your to support our mission to invest in women and girls in the Fox Valley, invest in the programs you've heard about today. I mentioned before lunch that we do have a $10,000 match if you are willing to give as well. So please go to um, investinher.net and make your donation. Please consider making it a gift that's meaningful to you. We only have until the end of the day tomorrow to meet that match. And again, gifts of $50 or more will be recognized in our October email newsletter. So I want to close to you for this part of the program with a quote by um, philanthropist, women's advocate, Melinda Gates. She said so eloquently, when we invest in women and girls, we are investing in the people who invest in everybody else. Invest in her. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Don't go too far, okay? You know the drill. You, it might be your first year, but you've been here before, I know. Uh, um, powerful words, though, to bring a call to action. Can't say the website enough. One more time, investinher.net. Or if you're not comfortable doing that, you can fill out the gray envelope on your table to make a donation. And then leave that with a volunteer. They'll be walking around the ballroom as you exit. So just remember that your support changes lives. We've heard at least two stories about that here today. Uh, and like I said, Julie, not time for you to go anywhere. One more very important piece uh, of the program to do. I see people who've been here before, they're getting out all their raffle tickets right now. <laughs> so yes, we're gonna give away some prizes. So raffle basket number one, do you wanna talk about that? Sure, if we can have it on the screen, maybe up here. There it is. Look
look at that. So this is raffle basket number one, a Michael Kors handbag. Um, we have a wine tasting from XE54 Wine Bar, $150 gift certificate, some other fun stuff you can all see on the screen. So I'm going to make you do it. <laughs> Do you want me to read the number? I have my glasses on. Read the number. Okay. <laughs> I'm reading the number because I have my glasses on in case you missed that. Okay, but I'm still doing this. Uh, might be time for new glasses. 593802. And give a whoop whoop when we know it's you. 593802. Hearing some murmurings? All right. Okay. We, have we have a winner. Put that down there. Okay. okay. Raffle basket number two. Got another Michael Kors, another Michael Kors tote bag filled with lots of goodies. This one has the August Haven uh, gift card in it. Um, so that will be fun shopping spree for somebody. There we go. All right. This number is three four four. One, six, two, two. Oh, that one, man, she was on the ball back there. Congratulations. Okay, Julie, basket number three. Basket number three is Tori Birch. Yes, it is, there we go, look at that tote bag. And this one, thanks to our friends at Avenue Jewelers, has this beautiful um, necklace in it as well, and a bunch of other goodies. And let's not forget the bang shoes certificates. <laughs> All right, the winner of this one is 593937. All right, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> now, everybody, that's the kind of enthusiasm we want when you're donating to investinher.net. Thank you so much for coming today. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next year for year 20.